Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brandon Davis. I'm the founder of the Rags to Riches community. I am highly, highly unqualified to give you any advice about anything. I barely graduated high school. Do not like or comment on any of my videos, and please do not subscribe. Let's get to it. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brandon. I am the CEO, the CFO, the CTO, the Supreme Ayatollah of the Rags Riches community. And if you're here right now, there's a very, very good chance that this is your last opportunity to turn away. You're, you might be new. I'm telling you right now, do not like, do not comment, do not subscribe. Go ahead and turn this video off right now. It's going to be the best thing you could ever do. Because once you watch one, you can't... <laughs> Let's be honest, you can't just watch one. You gotta watch a lot more. And that's just gonna make my life harder. It's gonna make your life harder. You'll lose marriages, you'll lose money, just stay away. Now, with that said, Pulse Chain Bridge. You might have heard about bridges in the past, right? You have no clue what a freaking bridge is. So we're gonna take your knowledge from here and we're gonna up it to here tonight. We're gonna talk about a bridge. It's a very simple concept, but there's a lot of concepts that you don't understand. So let's piece them together while you're here. What in the real hell is a bridge. Before we get into it, let's just lay some foundation, some basic concepts. Think about different blockchains such as Pulse Chain, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Solana, Cardano as giant land masses separated by water. Each land mass is full of resources that the other land mass needs. Each land mass has users and companies and apps that provide services that the other could benefit from, but they can't benefit from it because there's no connection in between the land masses. Right? So let's move to the next slide here. Let's pretend these land masses are actually Ethereum. And let's pretend this land mass is actually Pulse Chain, right? What we want to do is put a bridge, put a bridge in the middle. And that's going to allow us to move resources back and forth between the chain. Does that make sense? You got two land masses that were originally separated by water. Now these two land masses have a bridge. Now this truck represented data represented by this truck here indicates that we can move that energy back and forth are you feeling less dumb yet if you're any one of my followers who've been around for a long time you're going to stay dumb there's no hope for you but maybe those of you who are brand new could just turn away right now and i hope you do the question becomes why are bridges important you see just like in different countries where you have different mannerisms different cultures different languages forced marriages, odd mating rituals, blockchains differ as well. What if you could create a connection to another built out network and tap into the financial energy of millions and millions of more people, millions of more dollars, millions of more companies, and millions and millions beyond that. So when we look at this, when we look at these little, little marbles with people inside, these represent ecosystems. These represent blockchains. These represent companies that have compatibility with each other. These are blockchains. Now, they might be very, very successful blockchains on their own, but we know that the network effect, being able to connect networks, is really what creates the value in, in a network, right? So what we need to do is we need to put bridges in between all of these. We need to be able to move money from one to the other. We want one chain to be able to do commerce with the users of another chain. We want competition, you know? Every blockchain has users, every blockchain has money, every blockchain has applications. The power of crypto occurs when resources can flow freely between blockchains. This also increases competition to provide better quality user experiences because people aren't trapped and they're gonna flow to areas with the least amount of capital, least amount of capital resistance. Money isn't trapped on islands. Apps are not trapped on islands. When data moves, things get better. You tap into bigger and bigger networks. And you get to learn from other people and you get to adapt. I like the competition part of this too. If you can connect to another network, then people will flow towards a better experience. It's just better for, for the ecosystems in general, all of them. We talked, about, we talked about what a bridge is. Now let's talk about how a bridge works. So we know that here's our two land masses. Now we've officially made our bridge so we can move stuff back and forth now. Let's say that you want to take your Ethereum and you want to move it to the pulse chain. You can't just send Ethereum to a pulse chain because they're not compatible. We talked about that compatibility thing, right? So here's how it works. You have Ethereum, you want to bridge the pulse chain. 
You go to a website, you connect your wallet, you insert your Ethereum, the contract locks your Ethereum into a vault and then mints a token that represents the value of that ETH that can work on the Pulse Network. Does that make sense? All right, so we're going to take our Ethereum. We're going to go talk to this contract. We're going to say, hey, we're going to lock our Ethereum in this contract, and they're going to mint an equal dollar amount of a token that represents of Ethereum but can work on the Pulse Chain. So if you've ever seen the wrapped Bitcoin, if you've ever seen wrapped anything, wrapped ETH, whatever the case may be, that's what that is. Somebody locked something in a contract, the original token or the original coin, and then you have a wrapped version that can work on the other side, on the other network. Once you get that, for example, you locked your ETH, now you have wrapped ETH that works on the Pulse Chain. You can take that wrapped ETH and you can take it to an exchange that lives on the Pulse Chain. And you'll be able to swap your money out just like you would before. So it's really that simple. It's that freaking simple. That's all it is, folks. That's it. That's it. Centralized exchanges, they're a little bit different. This entity in the middle, this is actually not a contract. This is like a third party. This is human controlled. The disadvantage is the fact that it's human controlled. You could get rug pulled. Your money could go away forever. Ladies and gentlemen, I promise that this would be quick. This is quick. It's to the point.